Hey guys, I am back again with another video and today I am sharing with you my wrap up for all the books I've read in October. I finished 10 books ranging from 2.5 to 4.5 stars. Sadly, I have no 5 star read this month. But let's go, I have a lot to share. I did something different for the cover page this time. As much as I love the collages I make every month, I felt like I should try painting again. And this bullet journal has actual watercolor paper in, so it was a perfect opportunity to try it out. I chose to recreate the cover page of one of the books I finished this month, Study in Drowning by Avarit, and I simplified it enough so it was manageable for me to paint. This is only a reading journal and I did not want to create unnecessary stress for myself. I used my old and trusted St. Petersburg watercolors and despite using numerous and heavy washes, the paper held well. It buckled a little, but honestly, it held way better than I expected. I will be adding more details with pencils later. Now let's add in all the book covers and some overall statistics onto the next page. As I said, I have finished 10 books in October and I read on average 100 pages a day. It is a bit lower than last few months, but I think it is still a lot. The statistics page is quite simple this time, I am only adding brown paper in the background. As always, I will post my reading stats on Instagram and I will show you only a few right now. All the books I finished were fiction, of course. Four books were fantasy, two were fantasy romance, two were manga and one for classics and horror. Half of the books I listened to, which is quite surprising for me. Four books were standalones and six were part of a series. And the oldest book I finished was from 1818. Now let's talk more about the books I have finished. And let's start controversial. After seeing The Serpent and The Wings of Night all over YouTube, I decided to give it a go. After all, this is fantasy romance with vampires, trials, magic, political scheming, basically everything I enjoy in my books and it should have worked, but didn't. The story is about a human girl who was, for who knows what reason, adopted by a vampire king as a child. She enters the only once in whatever time happening to the death competition where she will fight against vampires, hoping to win and get a gift from the goddess because she wants to become bonded to her adoptive father and become as powerful as a vampire without actually becoming one or whatever. It's so badly explained, I have no idea. But honestly, I don't get the hype. And this is DNF for this series from me. Half a Soul, on the other hand, was so magical and enjoyable to read. I've heard people comparing this to many other books, but for me it was a perfect blend of Pride and Prejudice, Magic and Fairies, Evil Ones. The story is about Dora, who had half her soul stolen by a fairy, which results in her not being able to fully feel, and that leads to her being considered as not quite so good wife material, because she quite often says what's on her mind and that is not proper in Regency era. One day she meets this handsome but overworked, grumpy and rude Lord Sorcier, who discovers her secret and decides to help her. It was fun to read, there were balls, there were gowns, matchmaking ons, witty dialogues, but it also very slightly talks about trauma of war and social issues. I recommend this to anyone searching for whimsical Regency romantic fantasy. There are two more books in this series and I can't wait to get to them, but I am also slightly scared they won't be as good. Next we have Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I was listening to the audiobook and it is narrated by Neil Gaiman himself. We are following Richard who is living his best average life and one day on the way to an important dinner with his fiance, they stumble upon a hurt young woman on the street and Richard wants to help her and then his whole world 
turns around and he ends up in the London below. It is a city full of monsters and saints, murderers and stage markets and it is amazingly and seamlessly woven in and out of the real London. Part of this audiobook was also a short story called How the Marquis Got His Coat Back and honestly I don't know what to say about this one, it's a story about Marky looking for his lost coat and it's like a side quest basically. I listened to The Sunlit Man, the fourth secret project by Brandon Sanderson in October as well, but honestly I do not remember a thing except being said it was not narrated by Mr. Kramer. My lack of enjoyment was not fault of the new narrator, I guess I was just in a weird headspace around the time and I will need to read or listen to this once again because it was about one of the side characters in Cosmic which I was so excited about. I got the Illumicrate edition of the Study in Drowning by Eva Reed and let me tell you, this is one of the prettiest books I own. I was so excited, I started reading it right away and it was also talked about as Dark Academia and Enemies to Lovers, which made me even more excited and I don't think this is any of those. There is a school setting in the beginning, but the rest is happening in disintegrating old mansion and honestly, I enjoyed that way more than chapters in the school. And I struggled to find the enemy in the enemies to lovers trope. The setting was atmospheric and mysterious, which made me really like the book, otherwise I would give it much lower rating. There was some plot, some world building, but I could not get behind logic in there. There was also this constant talk about war, but it brought nothing to the plot. The whole story felt somehow flat. I enjoyed the book because of the atmosphere and the setting in the old and mysterious mansion. Now for another unpopular opinion. I have never read Frankenstein and I was quite excited about it despite me not having the most success with the classics this year. And guys, I discovered this is free with Audible subscription as well as all Jane Austen books. The writing in Frankenstein was beautiful and I mean beautiful. I was hanging on every word just to not miss a great line and the first, let's say third of the book was quite interesting but the rest, man, it was a task to get through, it was incredibly boring. <laughs> now let's continue. I am not going to lie, I bought Slow Food by Brom because of the cover and the inside illustrations, not knowing what it was about at all. This was a perfect read for autumn. It was very atmospheric and unsettling read with beautiful art. But please look up content warnings before reading this one. I am okay with lots of stuff, but I had a hard time to read through some parts of this book. We follow young woman Abita, who was sold by her father to a stranger, only to become quickly widowed when her husband dies under mysterious circumstances. All alone she then fights for what little freedom she can get in this very pious and patriarchal society. She then befriends newly awoken demon Slowfoot, who is just basically trying to figure out itself. The parts with Slowfoot were okay, but I enjoyed Abata's chapters way more. Now back to the cover page, I edit details on water with white pencils and it looks way better than I expected. I also used gold paint for the title, it is shimmery and I think it goes well with the illustration. Now let's do a quick flip through. These month spreads are very text heavy, I guess I just had a lot to say. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments your favorite book of October or even of the whole year, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for being here, have an absolutely awesome day, see you next time, bye.